Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Fluctus Channel. After the end of the Cold War, there was a growing need for studies and development of new small surface combatants to operate in the coastal region. A powerful and advanced fleet of vessels that is fast, agile, and stealthy, able to neutralize small boats, submarines, mine threats, or even air attack. The result? The U.S. Navy $35 billion Littoral Combat Ship Program that creates the affordable combatants built to operate in dangerous shallow and near-shore environments, as well as the vast ocean. The first Littoral Combat Ship, or LCS, was commissioned in 2008, and it has come a long way since. The growing threats of coastal mines, global piracy, maritime terrorism, quiet diesel submarines, and a myriad of other possible missions forces the Navy to constantly upgrade its LCS and its crew men and women. As of 2019, the U.S. Navy has 35 littoral combat ships based in San Diego, California and Mayport, Florida. The LCS vessels themselves came in two different classes and designs. The Freedom Class design developed by Lockheed is a steel, double-chine advanced planning monohull ship. The Independence class is an aluminum-stabilized, slender, trimaran ship designed by General Dynamics. Both designs are a modular surface combatant that is highly versatile and often referred to as the smartphone of ships for its reconfigurability. The LCS was envisioned, designed, and constructed to be capable of changing primary missions through a modular mission package that includes surface warfare mission, mine countermeasures mission, and anti-submarine warfare mission package. The surface warfare mission package enables the LCS to detect, classify, track, and engage with small boats. It is often used for search and seizure missions, drug and counter piracy operations, and maritime interdiction operations. It is armed with two 30-millimeter gun systems, a counter-boat missile system, two 11-meter rigid hull inflatable boats, as well as a surface-to-surface -surface missile module. Its ability to conduct surveillance and attack is a result of its speed, capabilities, as well as manned and unmanned assets. The Mine Countermeasure Mission Package provides the ability to detect, neutralize, and sweep underwater mines. The Navy utilizes the Mechanical Mine Sweeping System from the MH-53, or the Mine Hunting and Neutralization Systems mounted on the LCS. Various technology has been developed and adapted to assist personnel working with the Mine Countermeasure Package, including remote mine hunting systems and the new vertical takeoff unmanned aerial vehicle. Work is on the way for the Navy to improve its ability to locate and neutralize mines from water columns and beach landing zones. All right, we're in. Drop it. 
The Anti-Submarine Warfare Mission Package of the LCS helps the commander to maintain undersea battle space awareness against diesel-powered submarines that work on shallow depth water. Along with protecting the fleet's assets, the coastal region, this mission package is also used to perform area clearance, barrier operations, and combat logistic force escort duties. Each of the LCS variants is capable of carrying small assault transport. The littoral combat ship is equipped with a flight deck and hangar for the Seahawk helicopters that are used for surveillance or assault. Unmanned aerial vehicles, like the MQ-8 Fire Scout, can operate for the LCS flight deck. The LCS also provides a stern ramp for operating small boats, as well as vehicles for roll-on and off-port facility. Both the Independence and Freedom LCS are armed with MK-110 57mm guns and RIM-116 rolling airframe missiles. The MK-110 can fire at a rate of 220 rounds a minute and up to 9 miles in range. The Independence Class LCS is equipped with the Raytheon Sea Ram anti-ship missile defense system located on the roof of the hangar. The Phalanx close-in weapon system carries 11 missile launchers for the rolling airframe missile. It is also loaded with three super rapid bloom offboard countermeasures and two Nolka decoy launchers. Despite the myriads of advanced technology and lethal armaments, the LCS's most crucial mission package is its people. Well known for its minimum manning, the LCS from the very beginning was intended to be operated by a core crew of 40, which was later increased to 50 crew members. Another 15-module detachment and 25-aviation detachment join the deployment that can last up to four months. Each cross-trained crew member is proud to be a part of the LCS family, as each is empowered to carry out various roles on board. This gives them a better opportunity to embark on a new journey with their newfound skill. Though designed to operate on the littoral region, the LCS often embarks on longer voyages for various missions. The ships usually carry provisions for 21 days, and it is equipped for underway replenishment, which gives them a more extended range and coverage. As with other U.S. Navy assets, the LCS has undergone several upgrades and retrofits to make it better equipped with the ever-changing technology. Its high speed allows rapid movements of Marines and equipment, and its versatility to perform various roles over the vast ocean, and the littorals at lower costs, make the LCS a valuable asset to the U.S. Navy and the other allied forces of the United States.
That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.